It's uh, now my honor to introduce Wei Monush. He's the ED of the Council for the Advancement of uh, Native Development Offices. Uh, it's founded in 1990. Uh, CANDU is the only national organization that focuses on education and professional development for economic development officers working in First Nations communities and organizations. Ray was born in Edmonton, Alberta, raised on Paddle Prairie Métis Settlement, and is of the First Nations descent from the Ermis Neskin Cree Nation. Hopefully I got that right. Prior to working with CANDU, Ray was the CEO of Settlement Investment Corporation. He then moved on to facilitate and manage the Métis Settlement's economic viability strategy, which received international recognition for sustainable development. Recently, managed, Ray managed and taught a self-employment program for the Métis National of Alberta. His volunteer work includes being appointed to the Alberta Water Council by the Métis Settlement General Council. He's the former CANDU co-president and director representing Alberta. Let's give him a nice warm welcome, Ray. Uh, Otawimen Sawawinen, uh, creator, bless us. I just want to uh, acknowledge the traditional territory in this area of the Algonquin people as well. I often uh, travel the country and often think of how it was a few centuries ago and how our ancestors lived. And my ancestors always tell me that you know you should leave the place as it was for the next generation to live on. That's always been good advice, but I think obviously that's that's changed today. That. In my introduction, um, uh, je suis uh, Creed de Plain. Um, je parle en français uh, très très bon, so excusez-moi. Um, I, I, I do know how to say je ne sais pas ten different ways, however. <laughs> uh, gross domestic product, and, and I was quickly doing some quick math. And I guess if I look at Aboriginal people in this land today, we probably make up about a million population. And, and just using the GDP, I, I think it's at 1.5 trillion now. Uh, so my quick math was saying, you know, Aboriginal people should probably be producing about 30 to 40 billion dollars. And uh, nowhere near that. And I often thought back too of what uh, Louis Riel tried to accomplish 130 years ago and uh, ultimately met his faith by a rope around his neck. <laughs> Hope that doesn't happen today. <laughs> um, but, you know, interesting to listen to the leader of the Liberal Party, intimidation by domination. And so we march to our drummer, which is Indian and Northern Affairs, that's where we get our core funding. And the latest mantra now is that there's too much C in CED and not enough E in CED. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've always asked, well, why can't we have both? Um, they think the panacea now is to form development corporations amongst First Nations communities across the land to be lean, mean, profit-making machines. And most, uh, most businesses in Aboriginal communities break even. It's always, always the way it has been. Uh, going forward, probably will be the same. So that's why I'm here today, to, to learn as much as I can around CED and, and, and thank the organizers for allowing me to come up and speak and be part of this process and invite my Aboriginal brothers and sisters to join as well. My dear wife uh, is a counselor with the Enoch Cree Nation. Her biggest challenge daily is, is capacity. She just does not have the, the, uh, the knowledge base and uh, the education levels 
of, of those people there to, to assist her. And, and it is a struggle. As mentioned earlier, I, I headed up uh, uh, an entrepreneurship program with the Métis Nation of Alberta. And for those individuals that wanted to get in the door, part of the process was allow, having them allow us to do a credit check and look at their financial history. And 85% of those people applying were R9. Uh, so their credit history was terrible. There was just no way they were going to get in the program, and thus we closed the door. And to me, again, that's just about education. That's about being trained in financial literacy. But I think in Aboriginal context, we have to balance it with cultural literacy. Too many of our youth don't know our political systems, how leaders uh, are elected today, and, and that balance between hereditary and, and, uh, and the Indian Act today. Um, other national organizations I mentioned, uh, the National Aboriginal Credit Corporation, National Aboriginal Land Management Association, the Aboriginal Financial Officers Association, the Trust Officers Association, all of these groups, we try to work together. And I know now the Assembly of First Nations is, uh, is uh, asking us to help them create a state of the Aboriginal economy. And, and I think the thinking is that every four years we would do this, have a comparative analysis between those years, and then base it on demographics. Um, but that demands good, reliable data. And how we collect that now is so critical. But there's so much distrust in our communities. Uh, you know, the, the friendship treaties, the treaties we have, um, we're now forced to go to the courts, uh, to use the courts now to exercise those treaties. And uh, a lot of suspicion and also a lot, a lot of lateral violence now in our communities. The lateral violence is just that uh, innuendo, nepotism, jealousy. And it seems to be so acute in our communities. It, it, it's, it's not just a, an Aboriginal thing. But it seems to be so acute and, and uh, rather than look at a business venture and, and just weigh it and analyze it on economics, we look at the players involved and the family names and say, well, we're not going to be part of that process because of those people involved. Now, I don't think we think that this is going to solve everything. I think if we can start to discuss it, we're going to move ahead a lot quicker. So with that, thank you. Thank you for inviting me and involving me. Look forward to the questions. Thank you.